Hey everybody, just a quick heads up. There was a little bit of a technical issue at the start of this episode, so for about the first five or six minutes, Jameis doesn't have a mic on. You can still kind of hear him in the background, but we did go ahead and get that fixed. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything, it was just Jameis talking, and as always, he didn't say anything of substance. I'm just kidding, Jameis. But everybody, I hope you enjoy this episode. Sorry about the little technical difficulty, but welcome back. I hope you have a great time. This is a fun episode. Get ready and enjoy. The podcast you are about to listen to addresses potentially sensitive subjects, including violence, trauma, and dark or distressing scenes. The humor is often irreverent and can be quite crass at times. Please note that the jokes made within the podcast are meant for comedic purposes only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the production team. This content is not intended for audiences under the age of 16, and listener discretion is advised. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Room and Bard. I'm James, your gentle, delicious dungeon manser, the very stern but handsome dungeon daddy with most of the answers. And joining me today is Senor Solar Flare, Bron Vito playing. I have absolutely nothing to say to that. Uh... Trey Shanda. That's all you're getting from me today. Also joining us today, the man who brings the chocolate salty balls. Why are you looking at me when you say this? And, and he it's not slaps me. them on the table for alls. It's Jameis playing Don Quixote de la Mancha. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> you know, if you quit smoking over there, you won't have to cough. But some of y'all don't know is that he smokes throughout entire experience. But it's all just. I have to go once. home and wash. It's just nice. straight flour. When we're editing, there's so many cuts for coughs. <laughs> it's mostly coughs. It, 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 our recordings are like two and a half hours. Five hours. Uh, and an hour started, and a half is cut off, not, and it's just me coughing or taking bong rips. Yeah, just there's <laughs> a James cough cut. Oh, oh god cut. damn it. Oh, hell, I'm not listening to this episode. <laughs> it's a bong rip. Wonderful. I don't like it. <laughs> And finally joining us today, the man who built all the windmills only to have them peppered with bullet holes, Trevor playing. Adam Driver. Oh, no. Uh, Ag. <laughs> all right. He so, was the man who killed Don Quixote. I know. Okay. Cool. I, I, just, I, I, who was the man? Yeah, that's how long ago where the misfits would roam. There stood a tavern, a place to call home. The room and bar where the stories would flow Respite for the weary and rest for the dreary The place to be and the place to see Like a flame that never falters The spirits never die As the nerd dwells and travelers share their battle cries They raise their glasses high To the victories and defeats In the room and bar tavern Where the heart of storytelling beats I'm your daddy what you... Shit, I forgot that's where what we ended. What the fuck? I forgot that's where we ended. Shit. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I forgot. Trey got irrationally upset when he said, I'm your new daddy. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know why. Right. He's like, like the guy oh. just bursts into the bar. He looks at you. I wasn't prepped for I'm that. I'm your Adam. daddy. <laughs> and Trey was like, what? And, or at least it's, I'm about to be for the next three weeks of your training. Uh, excuse uh, just, ex fucking just, excuse I'm me. I'm the daily sack scraper. The Drake Warden of this town, and you are my Drake Warden Let. What's a let? It's a small. It's what you do to me every time, every day. It's you 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 make of me let down. You let me down. Uh, I might I, I I might still be uh I might still be slightly drunk. I, now you and that cute little clockwork what? dragon are going to come with me, and I'm going to train you into a true, real Amer Drake Warden. An Amer Drake Warden? I meant to say a Drake Warden. I have a lisp that do comes out in the beginning of what I say, and it sounds like Amer... Do, do we doot, doot, wear... dootin', tootin'. Get your booty scootin'. Let's get out this door. Can I bring my beer? You're not old enough to be drinking. This is the Drake Scouts. He spits some of the beer that was in his mouth back into the big mug. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to beat you senseless if you don't get out this door with your little dragon lit. Hey, okay. uh, Charlotte, should uh, we, uh... Seltzer, you want to do... Do you think this yeah. is... Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to teach you some cool things I can do with my mouth. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, lucky. Fuck. 
like this. And he spits like just a little lightning out and a little smoke, but it like makes like a six inch arc that just like shoots forward and separates from him and just like hits the door next to the Drake Warden's just like, Bzzz. yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool, I guess. Wait, I, these guys are going to come with. Uh, fuck no, no they, they cannot. Everybody slow the fuck down. Where are you, Tim? I'm taking him out to Scout Reach. Just walked in here and went, you, you're coming with me. It's the, uh, it's the version of the Drake Warden Scouts that I, myself, am in charge of. It's for poor and impoverished Drake Warden to be yours who cannot afford the general pageantry that comes with joining the Drake Warden Scouts. Are there badges? Absolutely not. You get scales. Oh, okay. I like scales. Uh, honestly, That's, honestly, dude, I think you, it's right dressed now you up get... in the, the, the really colorful armor, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. It, yeah. is it all sectioned off like an arm is one color? And yep, then... his arms are one color, his helmet is one color, his breastplate is one color, and his legs are one color. They're all the different colors of the chromatic dragons. Can I just keep, like, one color for my armor? Or... Your scales are awarded based on your elemental affinity the things you can do in the complicated measure that you took in order to earn it. Now, this one right here, this white scale, that's got the big old J on it, stands for joining. You get this automatically for joining. It's kind of like a participation scale. What do I get for making friendship bracelets? I'm pretty keen on that. Probably kicked. We're like, real organi- I'm not familiar with that color. Well, you're gonna be. It's black and blue. Great. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't think it's that. Leave it sounds... me alone with the scoutmaster. Nothing could go wrong. <laughs> the sack scraper is a trusted name. You know, I, I, I think, I think he might be joining a cult. I mean, that's which is full on. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of him. I mean, he's taking initiative in his life for once. Everyone needs to be exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, you can either I don't know what my voice is doing right now. It might be the drunk. As this is all going on, <laughs> I'm just a little drunk, so my voice is. Yeah. yeah. As as. Drunk raccoons are normal. Sober thoughts. <laughs> as this well, is happening, see, I, uh... two bipedal fish people walk in behind him and sit down. They're wearing cloaks, but their hoods are down. And they sit down at the bar, and they're just staring back towards Charlus. Bipedal fish people? Yep. Uh, so we see this yes. happen? Well, you might not. You're a little enamored right now, but the other two, you do. So what do you say we get going here? You got three weeks of training before I can release you into the wilds as a full-fledged Drake Warden Scout. Okay, I uh, see you- do you guys think you're going to be okay without me? For, uh, yeah. I, no, I, Seltzer and I uh, are going to be gone for three weeks. I'm the Drake. Seltzer, why are you coming with? I'm your Drake. Oh, Where? oh that's uh, what's going I uh, thought you were going to get a Drake, oh, too. We're that. And then we were both going to get Drake. So, I got your name so tattooed you- under my wing. So, <laughs> so somebody's used like like a Dremel to etch in your name. <laughs> God damn it! I've been hit my own personal silver. Yeah, this so, is how he repays me. So, shit. all right. So I'm Charles. repaying by being able to travel with you for the rest of my days. So, yeah, Charlotte, here. Is there something with the egg? Hey, yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're good at like disguising and forging and all that, right? What if I kill Egg and then you forge me his identity and that way I get Wait, what now? So <laughs> Alright, I think it's time to go. Yeah! Okay. Get going out here! My voice changes. I've got voice dyslexia. Okay, so just so we're clear, I'm gonna leave with Seltzer. Three Neither weeks! Neither of us is getting a Drake for three weeks. Except You have I, a Drake! Seltzer and I are buddies. Seltzer is your bonded companion. We're partners. When the fuck did they bond? And neither of us is going to get a Drake. Correct. Okay. You can't have a Drake until you have your Drake badge. And you can only get that after you earn 10 other Drake Warden badges. I thought you said you didn't have badges. Scales, you got me talking all backwards here. I was really confused. For a a minute ago, my voice was working, but one of your guys' wasn't. I don't know what's going on. I saw the lips move and I couldn't understand you. Sounds like a stroke to me. Is leather work, like making a short pair of shorts? 
Leatherwork is a true skill of any Drake Warden. You gotta know how to patch up your holes. Okay, I think I'm in. All right, let's go. I'll, I'll talk to you guys in three weeks, I guess. You owe me like 10 silver. Try not to what? die. I'll miss we, you too, Charlotte. We can't milk you for all your worth if you die. Just remember that. We tried milking me that one time, remember, and it didn't work. <laughs> God damn, I keep on forgetting how much of an idiot you are. So, what we're going to do now. When did we try milking you? <laughs> <laughs> when did this happen? I don't know. While I'm working with them, I want when you to come up. Yarn. <laughs> I want you to come up with the 10 scales you earn over the next three weeks before you get to graduation ceremony. Okay. But there's a twist. I want you to roll a d20 for each one you come up with. In any roll that's five or less, you fail that bad or that scale, and you have to try again. It'll add an extra day. Any of them that are five to ten, you succeed at, but you're average. And if you get any that are five to 15, you get an above average scale. And any that, or sorry, do, uh, did I say five to 15? I meant 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Uh, but 11 do to 15. 10, do, yeah, do 11 to 18. Those are above average skills. And then anything you get a 19 or a 20 on, you get an expert scale in. Rad. I want them to kind of fall in line with your, your like skills. Like if you have like, oh, nature, like, you know, figure something out. Feel free to have fun with it. Make up silly stuff. I don't care. But I will not make up silly things if in you our want. silly Can podcast. If you want, yeah, Can feel I? free. <laughs> Here's one. Cotton candy making. But just, I, just will, it out there. I will find a way to put these onto your character sheet as skills you might be learning now and can access later on. Wonderful. So try not to metagame it. Go with what Ag would like. Killing God. <laughs> <laughs> he failed. Roll the one. Yeah. <laughs> the Nietzsche badge. I got a high score. But any of the any of the rolls that do come out, uh, one to five, the max you can get is a ten. So like, just it takes an extra day, and you go back, and you just get a moderate pass on it. Okay. You can never come back and then automatically relate. Is this it. how you're kicking me off the podcast for the next like three months? No. Because the last two episodes, we've gone 20 feet. <laughs> 40. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they have been your two fault. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no. Um, with any luck, three weeks will pass before we're done with this episode. Wonderful. Okay. We'll right. move another 40 feet. <laughs> Naruto would be jealous of our filler episodes. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're not. We're trying to compete with DBZ here. It's hard, but we're trying to. Driving car alien buddy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, Rick. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Charles. Yes. The tavern is alight with energy. There are teens trying to find where the gnome went. The like crazy spectacle that just happened of Hedalia's sack scraper coming in and picking one of your crew has drawn much attention to you. But you do notice two creatures are paying more than average attention to you. They're sitting at the bar. They've now drawn their hoods up over their faces, but you can still see their slimy, scaly fish faces looking at you. Give me a perception check. Bing bong, bing bong, my bad. Hold on. <laughs> I need to print my fucking character sheet again. For the third time. <laughs> Shush. Eight. Fuck these They're guys. wearing gray cloaks that cover the entirety of their bodies, aside from their fish heads that were exposed when they walked in. You see a little protrusion sticking out of the back, which you think might be their dorsal fins. Other than that, they're completely nondescript, and you see one of them talk to the barkeep, grab a key, and then go up the stairs to a room. They both disappear out of your sight line. Oh, that adorable. They must be a couple or something. I don't know. Trey, mm -hmm. you need to give me a perception check. Uh, all right. Let's 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 see. First roll in two weeks. Let's And I'm using the dice that hates me the most. That's, uh... Give me a one. <laughs> That'd be a 21. I got a Shit. one in there. I got a one in there. In the corner of the room, mm -hmm. you notice that when the teens entered into the room a moment ago to come find the gambling gnome, Something scurried in behind them through the open door. Mm. And in the corner of the room under a table where you were a moment ago, there is a female raccoon crouched down, nibbling on some discarded food bits. Cool. You see her looking at you. She's giving you the raccoon equivalent of bedroom eyes, <laughs> which I don't know what it would be. 
I'm guessing her ears are back and she's like, <laughs> but see, now here's the thing. Does Trey have like those feelings? Because all he cares about is like, I have my pet, my goopy. And then now, now my right. son that <laughs> disappeared that I didn't realize was my son. Uh, and now I have strange feelings about that. Are capable of emotion? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Side note. Where is your ooze? Should be on because my arm. it's not on your arm right oh, now. Fuck. Um. Mm, right. <laughs> Passed out. Where? Uh. Charlotte. Charlotte. Char- Char- yes. The last thing you ha- remember. Have you seen Tubi? No. No. Oh, the fuck. last thing you remember was Tubi was eating part of the meat wheel, hmm. and then the gnome disappeared, and Tubi fell onto the floor. Okay. Uh. Trey is gonna get down on all like really low to the ground on his feet and just start scurrying around looking like using his nose to smell and try to as you do the raccoon in the corner jumps onto all fours arches her back and (laughs) Trey does it back at her (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ what the fuck's going on here you two what what's happening uh hi Trey excuse me it's been years hi uh hmm hmm Hello? And you see Tubi. Tubi is nuzzling up on her. Tubi? Uh, hmm. Hi, Trey. Hi, you. I got some good garbage over here. Hi. Oh, I mean, I do like garbage. You want some garbage? Yeah, I kind of want garbage. Okay, yeah, okay. (laughs) Who? Give me that garbage. (laughs) (laughs) Charles is just scared shitless at everything happening here. He wants to ask questions, but he knows he probably won't receive any answers. Just so you know, Trey doesn't remember who she is at all. Hi, Trey. Uh, hi. Who hey. are you? You don't remember me? Uh, The last thing I remember is waking up in a garbage pit and then I found Tubi. Yeah, Tubi. Yeah, Tubi. The ooze it's bouncing all around you. To be determined. Ne- yeah, I thought of that like, you know. That's Tubi. Yeah. I Your thought guide. of the- My guide? No, he's my buddy. I found him in a pit he's when I woke up. He's guide. No, he is. Did you forget pet. your mission? What mission? I, he, like I said, woke up in a garbage pit. He's he's taken a lot of brain damage over the last Who's week this? and a half. Oh, this is this is hey hey. hey. This I, is my, calm this the is fuck my, down. This is my. Are we friends? I you know fuck it sure why not? Okay, I guess he's my friend. His name's I was Charlotte. your friend. Cool. Again, <laughs> garbage pit saw Tubi. That's all I know. I've just been trying to find him stuff to eat because he's so cute. And then I blew up a uh, giant ooze. Jesus Christ. And, uh, and uh, myself. She approaches you on all fours. And I lost an arm. And Tubi is riding on her back. Oh, right. I don't... I, I'm yeah, you're on all three. So. <laughs> all three. Not all four. So on all three. Oh, yeah. That's new. Yeah, Tubi I guess ate it. lost. She puts her paw on your forehead and you feel the worming arcane energies of a spell. And you can tell she is reading your thoughts and memories. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, you, you don't remember anything. Like as I remember seeing Tubi, thought he was adorable, and then... You don't remember anything. That's hurtful. I remember... So you haven't something. progressed on your mission at all. You mean mission to find Tubi food? I have, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, we... You remembered your name, you remembered Tubi's name, but you don't remember anything else. I mean, yeah, I remembered my name. Peculiar. Peculiar. Human language is weird. You know, I have a hard time talking this language, too, as well, sometimes. But, uh... Strange. Also, I didn't remember Tubi's name. I thought of it when people asked me what what his name was. Well, it was probably just in the subconscious, and you assigned it as it was meant to be. I mean, yeah, it did sound right when I said it. And he responds, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was because of our connection. Who would respond to not their name? I mean, it's an ooze there. It's your guide. He's my friend. He's my pal. We share a connection. Sure. But he was supposed to help you on your mission. Let's be real. All he does is go and tries to eat things. And uh, I love him for that. (laughs) He's not eating things. He ate a method. He's sending it back. No, he full on ate a method. Yeah. Like, I watched it It dissolve. was a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? We had to kill it. I mean, I'm... We were asleep, <laughs> and all of a sudden... <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't dissolve things. He Does that mean that you guys got my arm as well? <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot! 
Yeah, look, it's it got infected with something, and I didn't want goblins. Yeah, stuff. it uh, it 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 caused a problem as well. How it was an arm. The infection infected everything it touched. That's why I'm here. I had to Weird. come and see if you were okay. We thought this entire world was infected by the stuff you sent back. We were analyzing it. The method, by the way, destroyed most of the lab. Lab? Right. You don't remember. Okay. Let me take the next three weeks to go over your mission and everything <laughs> that's happening here with you. It's going to take a while. Charlotte, am I hallucinating? Am I so drunk that I'm listening to a talking raccoon? This reminds me a lot of a book I read once. Um, I think... I think it was called The Adventures of Jason Bourne. Um, <laughs> that's a weird name. It is a weird name. Was I he like constantly being born and that's why his last... You, you know, I made Jason it Bourne. to like page five was, and I was like, this is fucking stupid and put it down. It was just his mom walking around constantly in labor and a gun would come out of her <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what I'm doing. And the mom just be like, stop it, Jason, you're not born yet. And he's like, hey, hey, I'm, I'm being born, this. mom, I'm saving the world. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, you're not even born, you can talk, you're a genius. <laughs> I'm ge oh my God, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> Written by Matt Bain. <laughs> His true name is Math Math uh, Nathaniel uh, Demon, but he didn't. He didn't want people to know he was a demon, so... No, it's he just Damon better. spelt with an A-E. Methane. Day Damon. I met Damon. <laughs> Nathaniel Damon. So, uh, you want to come with me for three weeks? Not really. All right, great. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> oh, Trey is the Jesus weirdest... Fuck, what the fuck is happening? I'm going to say this right now. Trey might be the weirdest character I've ever played in my life. <laughs> he just, he's just like, nah, and then he does the thing that people... It's like, okay. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes railroading you easy. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> it kind of does. Charlus, your <laughs> raccoon friend and his raccoon girlfriend scurry out of the building. Uh, uh, all right, I guess I'll just fuck off and die by myself. Or... You're now sitting alone in a tavern where... A lot of the tavern's attention is on you, as you were a party to the two weirdest events most of these people have seen in some time, which is saying a lot. And in walks somebody you recognize. Okay. You've seen them walking around town, and they seem to be the head of one of the different clans of guards. And he comes up to you. He puts a sack of coins. You hear them jingle down on the table in front of you. I don't know if you know what I know. That is to be known, but I'm going to tell you so you do know. We need your help. It's not hard. I just was sent this way by the councilwoman. She said I can trust on you and your friends. I don't see your friends. I honestly don't care. I'm just tired of dealing with this shit. Here's some money. I need your help. It's going to take some time. Come with me. You had me at the clinking of coins hitting the, the the table so yeah f it's fucking take I have two weeks and ten days which is to say it's gonna take three weeks <laughs> <laughs> well how fucking convenient because it seems like everyone's disappearing for a month let's let's go all Fuck right it. there is a infestation of purple chickens in this town and i need your assistance to find a few that are invisible a few that are visible and a few of them that are wearing magic items like cursed rings and cursed brooches that are spreading chaos, and I, you can keep whatever you freaking get off the freaking bodies when we're done with this stupid infestation. Somebody said they're druids. I don't believe them. I don't care. They're causing a ruckus. I can't see them. Can you tell me as to why me specifically? The, the councilwoman said you did a good job at something and you could be trusted. I don't know. I Like I said, I don't care. <laughs> I'm telling you what I know so that you know that you know everything I know so you know. You know? Did did she say any other nice words? Yeah. Something about cool hair. I don't care. She said great pants and firm, tight buttocks was, or something. She might have been talking about the oxen. I zoned out after she started, like, sexualizing. It's a very sexually charged workplace, and I feel harassed every day of my life. That sounds fucking awesome. I'm in. No, it's, it's a terrible thing. I'm thinking of filing a violent workplace, like, claim, but... I don't have time right now because these stupid damn purple chickens. I've been told they're purple. I can't see them. I've been told you can. Oh, I guess if I can see invisible purple chickens, that's sure. Why you not? are a mage or something, right? You can cast spells or some shit to find invisibility or mage. something. I was told you have potions. 
I mean, yes, I'm the, a world-renowned alchemist. Yeah, sure. okay, great. We need a world-renowned alchemist for this. Let's go. Woo, let's go. <laughs> Sounds like a trap. What are you again? Oh, that? <laughs> that's what we need. All right, get in. <laughs> there's there's get coins. In. We have the candy. The- you have been handed a sack 500 copper pieces. Oh, well, <laughs> that's not... I should have looked in it first. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> There might be a silver piece at the bottom. Because that translates to what? Like f- five gold. F- yeah. <laughs> J- Jesus. Hey, you get room and board, though. You get to stay in the barracks. I s- he said that. <laughs> but just, hey, just look at it this way. Charles will, if he gets room and board, he will be a room and bard. Uh, <laughs> Full <ever>. credits. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever call me a bard again. I am not a bard. <laughs> Okay. Now, excuse me while I do bard shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's switch back over to Trey. Trey, you have mm-hmm. learned some troubling and exciting news. All right, right now, I, what I've written down for notes is raccoon female, lab, <laughs> question mark. Yeah, they all have question marks. Mission, to be equals guide, to be teleports things somewhere, doesn't eat. Concerning. You are a member of the Fey Realm. Okay. This raccoon here is... Your girlfriend slash lab partner. Well, it's... Uh, <laughs> I swear, guys, she... You don't know her because she's on another I swear, guys, I, a, yeah, I swear, guys, I have a girlfriend. She, she just exists. doesn't live here. Holy she lives shit. in another form of existence. Another plane, plane of existence. You... She's not from here. <laughs> in a team of awakened raccoons who were wizard experiments gone wrong... You basically were given too much independence and sentience, and being raccoons with opposable thumbs, you got out of your cages and escaped. But you couldn't escape the compound as a whole. It being in the Fey Realm, it was riddled with traps and wild energies, arcane magics and stuff, but you eventually overcame the wizard who was using you as you managed to learn what common you could and what arcane languages you could. You learned that this wizard was from the material plane and he was actually in the Feywild on the run but you had no comprehension of what the material plane was so you and your lab which is basically just this wizard's laboratory that you were were a subject in and then escaped with your girlfriend and other raccoons have overrun this wizard's (laughs) evil lair in the Feywild the lab is called the pit all right it's called the pit because it's the trash pit. Yep. So. And I mean, at first, you guys didn't know what to do. So you did, like, chew up most exactly. of his books yeah. and make bedding and stuff. Um, you realized that you could teleport to the material plane using some of his uh, magic items. But they take a long time to recharge. Like, they take months, if not longer, to recharge and teleport another person or being. And you volunteered to teleport to the material plane to research what it actually was and where this person came from to A, understand more about why you exist, why he existed, and if maybe the material plane is a better place for you and your pack of wild raccoon things to live. Tubi was a member of that experiment as well, but he was a teleportation mechanism for objects. If something went into Tubi, it popped out on the other side of the lab, no matter where Tubi was. At first, you guys used it as a little fun game, you would, like, throw spoons from one side of the lab into Tubi from the other side. And if it hit Tubi, it would just reappear in your hand at that side of the lab. Awesome. But eventually, they realized Tubi was not considered a being as he was a tool, a guide. And so he could go with you and teleport to the material plane. And you were supposed to go to the material plane and use him to send things back that could be studied or explain the material plane. For the rest of your lab partners who have never known anything else other than wild bestial nature and then one day woke up with intelligence and sentience. You are on a quest of self-discovery for yourself in an entire colony of wild awakened raccoons living in a wizard's laboratory in the Fey Realm. That's fucking badass. <laughs> I love that. This would break <laughs> this poor raccoon's brain going from I'm a I'm a trash monster that has an ooze that just eats everything, and all I want to do is make my ooze happy. To, to 
you're actually a scientist and you need to get this shit figured out. It's like, what? <laughs> uh, Again, me. it takes three weeks to get this information into you because it is just mentally tasking. You don't believe half of it. And also, proof, I thought that was kind of a cop out as- at first when you were like, it's going to take three weeks and now explaining it. Yeah, that would yeah. be. Yeah, and that, also, the, mo- the short end. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also, yeah, mul- this, is, this is years of trauma condensed into, let me tell you a story about who you and what you actually are. <laughs> and then you have to add in the multiple forms of brain damage he has suffered yeah, the past, also, oh, past oh, week. Shit. Maybe the fish really did make him smart. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, because he's always been smart. The, the fish you saw the been... family, he saw yeah. probably his past life as being a smarty pants. I should have eaten the fucking that fish. Or, <laughs> that or the fish had like essences of the fey wild fey wild magic in it so when he ate it and made it like kind of brought back a little bit of forms of memory like you just knew realize. that you were super smart yeah. but you were arrogant about it yes. <laughs> <laughs> i would love it so much if if trey was just an arrogant asshole before and now he's just like oh, uh, you, you, the world's your oyster is, yeah. <laughs> he, he could be, he could be. <laughs> Because it'd be a fun. It's like, yeah, he was an arrogant asshole. Then he did something because he thought he was better than everybody, and then it fucked him up so much he became a good person. <laughs> like, yeah. Beautiful. Like, cool. Yeah, that that was his downfall was just being an arrogant hubris. Yeah. yeah, hubris. Um, Glorious. Cool. Uh, quick question: What is my girlfriend's name? <laughs> Her name is Lady Christiana Talltale. Christiana? Like Christiana or Chrissiana? Chrissiana. Spell it like no Chrissiana. So C H R I S. Chrissy, I don't like that. Chrissyana sounds like a white trash girl name. Like, oh yeah, she's yeah. a white trash girl panda. Like Laura Ann Cr- or Chrissy. Uh, you know all the ones from that was that Ted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tall tail. Like Teresa Lynn, Amber Lynn, Tammy Lynn, Amber yeah. Lynn, Anna Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was probably the best part of that whole fucking movie. That was impressive. Rattling them off. All right. Uh, cool. Any, uh, anything else that I learn? Well, just as I'm allowing him to kind of guide mm-hmm. his development for this three weeks, I'm going to let you guide your development. What are some things you can take away from this information that oh might have been revealed and unlocked to give you some kind of weird, like, odd, Feywild influence in your life? Bron Vito. Bron Vito. Pick how to make nukes. <laughs> I don't know how I remember this, but I can make Raytheon knife missiles now. <laughs> yes, they are weird. Yes. Hey, 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 Faytheon. Faytheon knife, knife paladins Holy get Faytheon <laughs> knife missiles. A level oh. seven paladin spell. Holy shit! <laughs> Summons bright gleaming lights with thunderous energy in the sky to smite a target at a distance we've come maybe the them. target and maybe, maybe a, a school. local school <laughs> we've come and full it, circle and now that that's what it, it that's what paladins get like but then what episodes. i get is <laughs> what i get is faith on wild missiles now what's gonna happen next? I just launch them. I don't know where they're going. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what makes them wild. Hey, no, what spoiler you get alert. Is you get neither dumb does Raytheon. <laughs> yeah, neither does Raytheon. Cut this if you want to, but then all of a sudden for Charles now. I was gonna he, I was gonna have you go through some things. Well, I mean no no no, not for the story, but like oh. for what we're talking about, because we've been talking about Raytheon and Fat Tire is that eventually Charles learns that he actually makes beer better and he makes a beer called Fat Tire. And then we've come full full circle on all of our wanted Perfect. sponsorships. What, what's the name of his beer? Fat Tire. By fat. A crisp, refreshing fat tire from New Belgium Brewing. But we have Faytheon, yeah, Faytheon. knife missiles. I mean, that if that doesn't happen, I fucking it, quit. It, it, but what <laughs> but then we I'm have to pun down. your beer name. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how to pun that. Fat Cart Tire <laughs> no Belgian well, ale. Not, no, uh, it would be a uh, well fat cartwheel, like wagon wheel. This is gonna because tires didn't. You know, I don't think tires exist in this. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, but you're an alchemist. It has to be a pun with alchemy because faith. It is... doesn't have to be a pun with. No, but it'd be funnier. Well, not like not like faith, but Theon. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Fae, my my brain couldn't figure that out. I was like, which one is it? Faith F-A-E-T-H-E-O-N. or Fae? F-A-E no, T H E O N. We get to pull out one of my dice I rarely get to use. What's he doing now? Shit whistles. So now I, I have shit to missiles. I have to think of actual things that Sh- I said uh, shit whistles, but also shit missiles. <laughs> Faytheon knife. 
writing. <laughs> I am writing Faith the Knife Missile down just so I can remember it. <laughs> um, Faith the Knife Missile. But now I have to figure out what would what would be a fun thing that unlo- like a couple fun things that would unlock that from that. A uh, ballistics. What are you doing? What is this? Charles, Shit. roll me a d6. I was really hoping that it could take a while. Two. Pick two of the dice I'm holding. Holy For the listeners shit. at home, I am holding a D54, two D100s, three D100s, a D120, and a D, I think this is a 20, a D30. I can pick Got any two. Hands full of balls. Or sorry, it's a, the other, this is a D50. I can pick any two. Any two. Let's do a 100 and a 50. All right. 50. I would win the 120, man. That. Which 100 do you want? Black and red. Solid metal brass or black and white? Uh, metal brass. Yeah. yeah, that's a good. Oh god, I want to hear it. You could feel the table <laughs> yeah, drop. Yeah, this is this is a drop from four inches. I want to see. Here, wood I'll, chips I'll pass fly, it over there. Fly over your weird anime lewd uh, divider here. Oh my god, she's so pretty. All how right, mu- how much uh, did you spend on this thing? Uh, I think it was like twenty bucks. I think I got a really good deal on it when I bought it. I'm going to find one of these. So what do I need to do? I need you to roll that. Both or just Both. one? Both. Stop, please. Oh, God. It, I. How do I know which <laughs> the one The top it is? number. Is the top center. Center? So this, there is no, like, okay. I think 45? So. 45. That was on 45. the... 45. I think you have to roll both of them, so roll yep, the other one. Give too. me the other one. 22. Okay. What the fuck? Well, this is silly. In the process... Of helping take care of this duck problem. <laughs> Ducks? Chicken. Sorry, chicken problem. You find three things that are of dubious to incredible value. Okay. The first one, you find a cloak of the Inquisition. Uh, hell yeah. Whenever you break down a door, this red cloak speaks out loud, reminding you of various torture devices you could have at your disposition or disposal. It is always wrong. (laughs) Okay, so I'm just going to remind... Reminds me of bullshit. All right. (laughs) What was the other number? 45. That was 45. Oh, shit. 22. 22? (laughs) One of the chickens, when you caught it, was hovering in the air. It was hovering on... Or it was standing on top of a unworn pair of boots of levitation... These boots only levitate a few inches off the ground when they are not worn. What's with you and your goddamn worthless magic items? All right, that's fair. So I get worthless boots of levitation? (laughs) Sure, if that's how you view it. I mean, sure, they could be used for something, I guess. Boots of levitation that only work when you're not wearing them. Quick question. When they're not farting. When they're not being worn. Okay. What's the difference? That's up to you to find the mechanics of... I mean, I guess I could, like, hold on to them and fly off into the air, like, with my hands, but... The final item you found... Okay. You picked up off the ground after slaying the chicken that had them in its beak. The chicken had fear in its eyes, and it looked almost like an empty husk, like its soul had left its body. In the ground in front of it was a giant chasm, a pit that appeared almost overnight. Some people were talking about the fact there might have been a pyramid there for a moment and then disappeared, hearing the haunting sounds of what could only be referred to as a mummy lord. Others thought they heard the sounds of labyrinthian minotaurs howling in the distance in the clashing of spears. Some heard the sounds of gold and one person. (laughs) What does that sound like? Like gold coins clinking and gems and chests being moved. And one person even swears they heard the voice of a god. But whatever happened here, this chicken knows what it was, but it could not speak. But in its mouth, you found a deck of cards. Oh, Oh, shit. Oh, no. Did you just give me the... No. In the mouth of the chicken is what can only be described as the combined deck of many things and deck of many fates. Don't write it down. It blinks in and out of existence a few times before you, and you feel the beckoning call to choose a number and then draw that many cards from the deck. I'm going to blow my brains out. You can choose a number or you can roll for it. (laughs) How many cards are in the deck? I believe it's a full deck at this point. You should just... 
You should just do the entire deck. Fuck it. Go so, wild. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it has been fun to play as Charles Latanius on this podcast. I just want you all to know that hey, uh, you I love know, you, you all. You, you might get a nice little fun guy, or you might, you know, get 10,000 experience. Yeah, or... You Your know, soul could be trapped in a jewel. And that's the, what I'm expecting to happen. <laughs> there is 49 the cards in yeah. this deck. 49. 49 and cards. I, I can roll... You could roll the D fifty and just re-roll well, on a fifty. I mean, he could roll a D four or a D six, or you can say a number out loud, yeah. and the deck will allow you to draw the amount of cards it feels relevant because it'll never allow you to draw the full deck. Let's go fifteen. <laughs> what? what? Fifteen cards. What? I was expecting like maybe two. Let's let's have fun. <laughs> that's not fun. That's just death. Are you sure about that? Yes. Because in the deck of many things and many fates, there is many more bad yes, things. Yes, I know. Good We're you want it? Hey, I'm tired of playing it safe, gentlemen. <laughs> I ran away from everything Here's, because I am a coward. This, this is this either is, a new character or we're going to come back in after this time skip to a world full of Charlotte. I've been no, such a no, coward. There is going to be a world shifting event happening <laughs> right <laughs> and I, now. And Charlotte has been such a coward that he's been relegated to killing chickens for the village. So <laughs> oh, I'm tired I, of being I, I a what coward. It is, it was, you got so pissed at killing chickens. You're like, fuck it. <laughs> so, okay. While we're waiting for this to occur, let's just go over here and talk to <laughs> Trevor Specifically, Ag, tell me about your scales you earned. So it took me two extra I'm days. just going to sit here and shuffle this deck the whole time. I'm going to make sure this form, this this exact draw has never occurred in the history of mankind before. You wanted to play the game. We're playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Me yeah. too. It you sound I, so I angry. I, I, <laughs> the table raised about one inch. That yeah. was an aggressive... <laughs> I'm excited. I I picked five one time, and I thought I was fucking crazy. And let's put it this way. I got four really good ones, one really that, bad one. That's the equivalent of when it's you're a, like, it's, should it, we get prize for the table? Should we get should, yeah, We could be crazy, get some prize for the table. I brought math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's All right. This, it's in our second okay. season. Second season, these, Bard, the, I did the crazy thing. With the these are thing. the scales that Read them off. did. Um, I'm going to read from the lowest number that I got to the highest. And you might be thinking, oh, it sounds like a lot of useful things are in that low number. And yep, that's right. <laughs> uh, so woodworking was a four. Stamp collecting was a six. <laughs> Genealogy was a five. I have a hyphen there for finding parents. <laughs> um, <laughs> They might not exist in a couple minutes here. But. Classifying magic, six. Detection from Paws McGruff, eight. <laughs> you just, part of that three weeks was you in the bunk reading Paws McGruff That's comics. That's what I was thinking, yes. <laughs> yes. Archery, ten. Okay. Dragon calligraphy, twelve. Okay. Safety, sixteen. <laughs> Gardening, 17 <laughs> and weather 18 okay uh, i think that four you can re-roll because it's under five yes no that's just a fail wasn't it no it, it was it, that you you, you oh, takes an extra day you re-get it um it, just takes, it an takes an, extra, an day. extra day and it just comes in he doesn't even re-roll it oh. just it comes in as a moderate skill so it's a uh a oh. five to ten okay cool so so i'm a moderate at woodworking yeah, basically, Wonderful. you carved a snake, and you're like, I can woodwork. <laughs> it's mean a worm. Meanwhile, Hedalius is sitting there like, you didn't do anything. You just took the bark off a stick. <laughs> so I did try to model those off of Boy Scout badges. Okay. And just so you all know, uh, nuclear science is a Boy Scout badge, and I almost I'm, took that I'm shit. aware it is. There is also a really fun story about the nuclear Boy Scout, which is not related. No. Can I make ask a quick question about my stuff? Yeah, let's go. Is it just knowledge that I unlock, or is it? I mean, skills. skills. So, like, so what I'm letting I, him I, do, so, he, so you're can, you're unlocking the knowledge, and that knowledge can give you like a new skill or something. So, it, and theoretically, without breaking the game. Yeah. Although, I guess it doesn't matter yeah. at no, this no, no, no. point. Theoretically, I could. Charles. Theoretically, you I wanted to learn, play this game. Yeah. Theoretically, I could learn how to uh, make some things because there's two things that I think I could make that'd be really funny. An arm. 
No. Oh, okay. oh can, I? Can, I, <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I learn how to make a mechanical arm? Uh, I would say you have you have a chance of learning bioengineering. Ooh, okay. Uh, because the only because what I'm gonna make you do is at the same thing. We're gonna have you roll for these. All right. Because then, uh, what would you consider a a grenade? No, a smoke bomb that just uh, produces uh what flashbang? No, no, no. What what's it, these are two useless things that I just think would be fun. I to love do. it. Um, what's that cantrip that like just sparkles? Oh, um. Fudge. Yeah, I know what you're. It, it, I want to say dancing lights, but it's not that. It's pretty much. It's kind of like a distraction. So there's no smoke. He just yeah. throws it, and then it just like sparkles everywhere. Yeah, you're and then basically that can, can scurry you're, away. You're making like a, a ground flower firework. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other one is a uh, grenade or wand of polymorph that only lasts a second, and it's a <laughs> random polymorph, so he can polymorph someone, but they're only a, whatever it is for a second. I would allow you to change that to one round, so one round? six seconds. Six seconds? Okay, just because I think it'd be funny so to be that, like... <laughs> so that mechanically we can do something with it, Yeah, but it's not super overpowered, and I would say that once a target's hit by it, they're immune for 24 hours. All right. I would have to... What what type of skill would you think that... Would that just be... Uh, I mean, these are crafting skills, Yeah. so, so that, that would be... Uh, Dexterity-based? Getting one arm I have... <laughs> disadvantage on it i mean um, yeah uh, but you might roll well once no, on your craft bioengineered yeah, arm I was, I was, I was gonna make say the, the other arm bioengineering would, would is one that's one skill but then it would be like uh would it be gadget making yeah uh yeah i would i would like take a look fey, at fey gadget i would tree? read up on tinker gnomes all right um, I'll just put fey gadget one of the tree. one of the gnome uh sub races gets the ability to like gadget i would read up on that and i would give that to you all right, I'm, I'm just naming a ga- uh, fake gadget. Yeah, for now, just because it because it's it's not going to be the same as what the gnomes get. No, they that, make little clockwork things, but you're yeah. making like fey influence. Yeah, that's why it's like it sparkles because it's, it's yeah. fey magic, and then it sparkles and it, it needs to have like a smell yeah. with it because yeah, the fey wild's yeah. all about then, sensory uh, impact. Yeah, and then what else is more chaotic than a random polymorph that you could? So they could. Theoretically, polymorph into a dragon for one round, or a Tauras, or, or a Tauras for one round. It's like it's yeah. random. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not always. It, it's most not always, of the time, it's probably not going to be helpful. No, it's just like maybe they turn into a pot plant. Maybe they turn into a god. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Charles okay, Latanius gonna, Octavius gonna, Caligula the Third. Are you boys ready to party? I have. Two, I'm rolling. Yeah. First. Here's I'm rolling. here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to let you draw these cards. Okay. But you are going to place them in a line in front of you. Okay. And then stack them up in the order that you drew them. So the first one is on top. Okay. And then you're going to hand that stack to me, and I'm going to reveal those cards to you. Okay. I'm handing you a physical stack of cards here. It has been shuffled quite a bit. You are free to shuffle it yourself a couple times if you wish. Nope. Please pass that down to... Octotenicleus. If I think everyone at the table needs to shuffle it okay, once. Okay, fine. Go ahead, uh, cut it. So is uh, the rolling the same as what his was? Like the numbers? Yep, same okay. number of things. Um, I rolled them. I'm about to change the world. I got a name. <laughs> oh shit! You got a. I got. A, I got an expert on that. But then fake gadgetry. I got wonderful. A Okay, Can't so still wait. expert. Surprisingly, yeah, surprisingly, I'm still I, like, really I'm I would say but that's I, more. You let me so let me let me do it like this: that. the uh, <laughs> the the top to mastery the under that expert, <laughs> then moderate or just you know yeah. adequate, but and then under that I'm just gonna power failure. level ten say, times two skills, and then I'm going to get my soul trapped, and then it's that's it. It's gonna be the death avatar, or you're gonna be a. The DM in the next ten minutes. One Did you already two. shuffle? I, I oh, already okay. shuffled it. All right, let's do a little baby cut. Oh, all right. <laughs> so everyone at this table has shuffled the deck of many things and the deck of many fates together. I would laugh so hard as the if the first card is to traps pray? his soul. <laughs> so I'm going to just just draw. I think it's one at a time. Two, yep. Three. Yep. Four. Yep. Five. Six. Yep. Seven. Okay. Eight. Oh, yep. man, I'm starting to feel the weight of this. <laughs> uh, nine. <laughs> ten. What have I done? <laughs> Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. God, okay. I'm hoping now, one of those Leave it is in the way. order it's in it and is. bring it back to me. Here, there, pass. Nobody look. Okay, Nobody. now give me the rest of the deck. No. Yep. I want them. Give me the rest of the deck. Don't shuffle the rest of the deck. Oh. Because I think there's some fake cards that is like draw another card, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's going right there. <sighs> what 
Do they randomly take place at random times? They happen in order. I, I know. In, in, instantaneously. Yeah, I know. It'd be so All fun. Right. Like, now I have these for the I'm remainder of the campaign. And I'm I getting Death do. Avatar right off the bat. I'm very no, It's going to be the star. You gotta... So here's how this is going to work. There are some of these cards I will not reveal to you because you don't get to know immediately they're happening. Oh. Oh, yeah. I forgot that might be a thing. Yes, because there are some <laughs> things that make an effect in the world, and then they go into play, but you are not aware it has started. Syphilis didn't exist until you drew this card. <laughs> just remember, though, we are protected by the god Wawa. I don't. Think I'm just saying. I mean, he's got know. a great point. Is we are we have a by literal Wawa. god by us? He might help us. <laughs> I don't know. If... The first card is not revealed. Great. I made the, the game. second card is not revealed. I've made the world a worse place. <laughs> I'm super sorry. The third card. Third card? If you, card. If you get 10,000 oh, experience and just like level. Oh, exactly. Charlotte's Latanius. So yeah. You get a strong urge to create a remembrance, very strong remembrance of someone that your party has encountered and has died or been killed by you. Who is it? I have a strong remembrance? Yes. Remember somebody that has either died at your hand or in front of you or that you know of that has died in the history as long as you like can picture that person or somebody you've killed. Who is it? If it who the fuck did we kill? What was his name again? Oh, uh, F.T. Barnum? Yeah. Or, uh, it should be F.T. Barnum. <laughs> F.T. Barnum. <laughs> that makes me hilarious. Yeah, no, that, I was like trying to rack my brain. I was like, there was somebody important. Perfect. Okay, <laughs> F.T. Barnum. Barnum. I want you to tell me a couple of his personality traits that you are actually aware of. Tell me what, like, what do you know about F.T. Barnum? He's fucked raccoons. Yeah, boisterous, <laughs> fucks <laughs> raccoons. Um, Smell. Kind of, yeah, d d def, he had bad hygiene. Um, he was a nice guy. Boisterous, quote, quote. Yeah, bo boisterous and loud, little, probably overconfident. I mean, okay. considering he got fooled by three fucking idiots to have a no magic <laughs> night. <laughs> uh, so now, probably secretly stupid as shit. If um, you could change one thing about like his personality, what would it be? That he wasn't an evil piece of shit. Didn't Jameis, in front of you, as you draw your third card, the I, ground erupts. I would have went with uh, hygiene. <laughs> like he was actually hygienic. The ground <laughs> erupts. The earth begins quaking. Everyone in town is stirred into silence. And the gates open. And through the giant cogwheel vault door, partially decomposed F.T. Barnum walks in. And every step he takes, his body molds back to its living self. And you see him wave. Hello, friend. It's been some time, and I'm glad we can catch up. Jesus fucking Christ. I would love to tell you the good news. Yes? <laughs> Let's go grab some tea. Sure. But before he can approach all the way, you have a compulsion to continue drawing your cards. Okay. Fuck You have me. drawn the Revenant. One person, character, or creature is resurrected. Yeah, that's figured. And an aspect of their personality has dramatically changed. Ooh, F.T. Barnum in the party. F.T. Barnum in the party. You should have changed the fact that he wants to fuck raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> Trey will manage, okay? I would say fine. hygiene. That's probably the biggest thing. I'm morally good now, but I still want to get it on with a small mammal. Yeah, well, if, you know what? If, if I say he's not evil, then at least... He's going to ask for consent, and that's pretty fucking cool. He's going to fuck cool. that animal ethically. Charles <laughs> Latanius. <laughs> Attaboy. Ethical right. bestiality. <laughs> Charles Latanius. He wrote the book. Yes. Again, think of another creature, person, entity, somebody alive this time. Who is it? Seltzer. If you could choose Seltzer's fate, end and be final in any form, what would it be? Meaning, like, choose how he ceases to exist no choose his life lay out his life right now give me the three big sticking points of what he accomplishes in life how he gets there and then tell me how it ends i'm going to say heroic um i'm going to say full of love and i'm going to say that uh, longevity it, it never that, ends that, it, that, that, it, <laughs> that, that he never that it never ends omnipotent Immortal. <laughs> Omniscient. <I'm the> <laughs> Write those down. Shit, what did I even say? 
uh, heroic, heroic longevity, longevity and full of love. Yeah, full. And make sure that you was put wholesome. Make what sure you put fuck? Seltzer's because name I love him it. so fucking much. Okay, what? Make sure you put Seltzer's name above it. And then full of love. Okay. You have drawn the Weaver. Choose a character. You determine that character's final destiny. You do not know when the fate will come to pass, but it becomes certain and inescapable. It would have been so funny if you would have. You said have a cursed him to <laughs> immortality. Oh, I how had said horrible! It longevity. He said never ends. He did say never ending. Maybe he likes. He's a clockwork dragon. Yeah, like, I mean, he what's... already was pretty much immoral. <laughs> That's fine. Continue. What level are you? Three. You're oh, now no. level. 10. How much experience do you have at level three? Fuck. Uh, it would be a thousand something because yeah. I have a thousand ninety-one. So I'm around there. Drop down. You have drawn the fool. Lose 10,000 experience. If losing that much would cause you to lose a level, instead lose just enough to remain at your current level at minimum experience. Which I think is that. Draw another card. <laughs> so he has to draw another. So you have to add one? I'm adding one to the bottom of the stack. <sighs> so I'm what, level one now? No, no you're, you're, you're still level, level three. three. You just have no experience. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's you have a thousand experience. Oh, duh. That's yeah, a minimum you have. Oh, no, yeah. 900, I think, isn't it? I have no fucking clue. All right, I'll Milestone, take it. Milestone, baby. Think, yeah. think, <laughs> things right? could like, be worse. I'll take it for what it's worth. So, just so you know. I don't like the face you just fl- made. Flat zero XP level three. This uh, What I'm writing is probably wasted energy. Yeah, Go ahead. Just what so you know. Yeah, just that so was the only listeners know, James made a face <laughs> like Gilbert Gottfried stuffed his mouth with Sour Patch Kids and looked... He's only a quarter of the way through the. <laughs> See, cards. I'm I mostly picked fifteen because I know that James is a masochist DM. Uh, was going to enjoy all of this very thoroughly. Oh, I'm enjoying it. It's, I'm like, you want to play the game? Right Let's play pick, the game. Pick a being in the universe that Just is alive. Pinto. I mean, it could be a god. Yeah, it could Wawa. Be a, <laughs> the the Wawa. Yeah, I'm picking it Wawa. Took me a second. I'm like, wait, oh. You guys missed that joke. It, it was you good. You, you, yeah, mind, you just missed the god that I picked. Oh. In the distance, you hear the death throes of a dog. Did I fucking kill all that? <laughs> you have drawn the scorpion. <laughs> kill any one thing, no matter who or where. You killed the gawawa. You fed him grapes. <laughs> oh, no. Charles, oh, no. you have killed a god. How much XP would that be? (laughs) Oh, you don't get the XP. You now are cursed with all of the prayers sent to the god Wawa. (laughs) Forever emanating into your thoughts, slowly driving you insane. Okay, that was going to happen anyway, so (laughs) that's fine. This is such a fucked up episode. Cursed (laughs) with Wawa prayers. Okay. So just with how many cards he decided to draw, he could just kill all of us. Charles Latanius, you have drawn the skull. Okay. This card has summoned the Avatar of Death. Yep. And you must battle it alone or die. Yep. I know. The Avatar appears in front of you. God, I didn't A floating do this today. skull with a cloak behind it rests, hovering over the head of F.T. Barnum. It whispers in your ear a cold, eerie death. You hear it. I will wait for you to complete your destiny, and then your destiny will lie with me. Nothing will save you, Charles, my new victim. All right, fuck it. I don't. All right. What, what, what do you mean by that? Your next card. Great. Oh, we're just, I, I don't have to fight him first? Nope. Cool. The next card no, is. You said he's going to wait. The oh, next card I, is I, not I revealed. Listening. It goes into the oops pile. Next card. Where are we at? Uh, seven. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is nine. Oh. Okay, I thank can't. God. There it's are there over. are three unrevealeds, three reveal or uh three yeah, reveals. Yeah, but you had to draw one, one yeah, from the yep. pool. Okay. So keep going, keep going. How do you feel about snakes? Like Charlus as a as a character. Yeah. How does Charlus feel about snakes? Indifferent. A large serpent erupts from the deck itself. He doesn't like and snakes. And wraps around your arm, curling up you. Its tongue flicks into your ear as you feel a deadly venom dripping from its fangs. <laughs> Egg or tray? You choose or I choose for you? Ah, uh, no. 
Oh, I've made some choices. Why are you flicking me off? I don't like snakes. See, that's now I'm my personal life is now bleeding into this because I don't want to pick egg because Trevor doesn't like snakes. No, I don't like snakes either, but I'm okay. Just pick Trey. All right. Fine. Just, just but I don't want to pick Trey because his story's getting really fucking cool. Trey. Flip a coin. Trey, <laughs> you are in bed with your girlfriend who you now remember to be your soon-to-be fiancé. You have actually crafted a ring from the first oh. garbage <laughs> you have made <laughs> with, oh. with her it, when you quick, first escaped the laboratory. It, quick, James. Yeah? If you kill Trey, I will strangle you. Just so you know. Don't! I'm yeah, not no, no. killing anyone! <laughs> You're the DM. You can make DM magic. Just so you know. Go ahead. Just <laughs> Go ahead. Where, where's the knife at? Hmm? In... In one of your little raccoon pouches on your vest, you are fingering the ring, thinking if maybe this is the time now that you've been reunited and you remember, and you're on the material plane. You could just leave and start a new life. You have all these memories, and you also remember the time when you did first break out of your cages, and she was scared in her cage, and you comforted her by entering her cage and drawing her out, giving her a peace, a, a, a sense of peace and, and a semblance of normalcy. And it was at that moment when she looked up to you and she nibbled on your little paw and she, she licked your ear, grooming you a bit. You realized you were in love with this raccoon you had been caged next to for as long as you could remember in this disgusting laboratory. One of the only things that gave you peace and hope to go on living another day of through the torturous experiments of this wizard. And as this happens, you feel the cold scales of a snake slithering around you. And before you can react, it has you in a death grip. You can't get out. And it worms its way up to your ear, and it hovers over you, and its noodling head hovers over your soon-to-be fiancé, and it goes back to you. Hey there, buddy. You're a cute little Shh. thing. Kidding. You're not going to want to wake her for this. And it sinks its fangs into your neck. You can't speak. Your body becomes paralyzed, and the snake lets its two long, inch-long fangs come back out, and you see the venom dripping off the tips of them, and you feel your blood grow cold. You feel it congeal inside of you. You begin having chest pain. Your mind begins racing as it's starving for oxygen. The snake slithers backwards off of one day, and it disappears, and you realize you have been afflicted with a deadly poison that can only be prevented with a wish spell <laughs> or you will die in 24 hours. Fuck. Well, J good thing Charles you have seven yeah, more right. cards. I got Charles seven more Latinius cards. To has drawn the serpent. Okay. All right, well, I have seven cards to save... Ron Vito, Next your card. To, uh... Oh, man, what a great spot would it be to just end the episode here. Uh, I mean, you could. And be an asshole about it. All right. Charlotte Latanius. I had made a fucking mistake. I thought this would be cool in a way. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I don't know what you're saying. I knew that this deck was fucked, but like I didn't. God damn it. Okay. In front of you, mm -hmm. time stops. Sick. Everybody stops moving. Cool. The avatar of death is still active and still there. Mm -hmm. And you hear him whispering, you can't escape me. I, I didn't will, fucking plan on it. I I'm will ready. always follow you, okay. and I will be wherever you are until our battle is complete. Okay, fine. But Jesus. in front of you, a stone arch appears, shimmering at first like blue crystalline water and then taking a solid form. You hear angel songs in the distance, and the archway forms a copper door lined with a motif of all of the gods in all of the planes. You have drawn aperture. An interdimensional portal appears in front of you, leading to any one place of your choosing. It remains open for you to return back through as many times as you wish for one hour. Where the fuck? Where would I go? Next card. Oh, my God. Now we have to figure out how he's going to fuck egg over. To. <laughs> you have drawn the Syphilis. stag. Choose one being to designate as your quarry. This being can be anywhere, anytime, as long as it is alive. If you find it and kill it, you immediately gain a level. Just any being of sorts? Yep. And you always know the location and status of your quarry. Sir Reginald Towny, Tiny Townis. 
You immediately have a vision of Sir Reginald Tiny Townis. Hell yeah. You know exactly where he is. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And you know he is shit faced and balls deep in a gnomish hooker. That sounds about right. He is still wearing a rhinestone cape while performing the act, but has disrobed all other clothing. Classless. On his like fingers. A rhinestone gnome bard. <laughs> <laughs> on his <laughs> fingers, <laughs> he is also wearing magic rings. And the rings are all, um, what is it called? Engrammed? When they, they're like a, a letter. Anagram? Yeah. And they spell out biggest gnomus dickus. How God. many fingers does he have? Well, he's got layers of rings. Okay. Yeah. Had I known. He's like, what the fuck? Had I known that this was going to be the outcome, I probably just would have chosen myself so I could kill myself to gain a level and just never have to worry about things if again. If you had to classify your alignment, what would it be? Truly chaotic, like neutral. Pure new, like just whatever. You have drawn balance. You are now lawful neutral. Fucking gross. <laughs> Boo, now I can't do crimes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You can still, lawful just means that you uh, you can do crimes as long as uh, they're, lawful is just you're following some form of code. After I, I guess. It could be we, your code. Charlotte Latanius. Yeah. Four more cards. Out of the portal in front of you walks a tall, lithe, elven woman with grand wings, the color of autumn. Yes. Hello, Charles. Um, hello, hello. I am here to offer you a gift of sorts. I am Titania. Oh, hello. I am the queen of the Fae. Interesting. Yes. Uh, what, 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 do, what, do you, what do you need or want or, or have? I will give you one of two options. Okay. Technically three. And you can choose how you wish to use them. Okay. First, we will make an accord. Beep, beep. You must... <laughs> it's a Honda. <laughs> you must trade me something of immense, personal, extraordinarily precious value. It could be years of your life. It could be something physical. But if you do, I offer you an exchange. You are currently wielding something I created. The Deck of Fates is my magnum opus. I will let you draw three cards from the top that you have yet to see and have yet to touch, and you can choose one of them and put it into the motion of the fates. Or I will let you see the next three cards you have drawn and choose one to discard and never have to suffer its consequences. Meaning like or, the next one is coming up? Or? You have three cards left to draw. Okay. Or you can choose none of this, and I will simply go away, and you will retain all that is precious to you my new child. So I can look at the next three, or the last three. You can look at three you have already been granted by fate. Okay. Or you can look at the three that you have yet to touch on top of the deck. So and I can either, and I can discard one of them? You can discard one of the ones you have already drawn, or you can select one that you have yet to draw. I would like to, because because I'm not metagaming, I'd like to think that the snake wasn't a good idea, so can I get rid of the serpent? I don't want that to happen. It is already twisted into fate. Fucking you dumb. Cannot. And I hate it. Okay, sorry. Continue. Would you wish to accept the accord? Sure. What is the precious thing you offer to me? Um. I would like to line my halls with it. I will put it on a pedestal and display it to all the guests. So, uh, Charles. He's going to go ahead and he's going to look at his staff and uh, he's going to look at this elven woman. He's like, it may not look like much to you, but I was um, only raised by my grandmother. Uh, my parents didn't want me. They were ashamed of the fact that I was either elf or human mm -hmm. and wanted nothing to do with me. Yes, a I'm, fate born unto many of our kind. And my grandmother was the only one that took pity on me and she ran off halfway across the world and I... Never saw my parents ever again, and she made me this little staff because um, I liked to play wizard as a child, and um, it's the only thing I have left of her. Everything else was gone. It was taken. So this means a lot to me, and I don't know if it'll mean much to you, but uh, this is all I have to offer in terms of physical things. Are you speaking the truth? Yes. Like, for the first time this whole game, yes. <laughs> I was wondering. This she thing. touches the top of the staff, and you feel the arcane essence of another god influencing your life. And she takes the staff, 
She holds it in one hand, weighing it. Yes, I will take your arcane focus from you. You will never again be able to cast with an arcane focus. Okay. And she takes the staff, and it. she says a word, and it vanishes, leaving just a little bit of wood dust, sawdust on the ground. Which option would you have, Charlus Latanius? Reiterate the options again. So get rid of one that... You have three cards remaining that you have already what drawn. What about... You can, can look at all three of them and choose one to ignore. Or you can look at the top three cards of the deck that is still there, and you can choose one of those and make it happen. I'll do the first one. Charles Latanius. All three of that. <laughs> I'm going to let you look at these cards. Okay. And I want you to voice, because you as Charlotte are now getting to see fate as it is to be in front of you. I hate it, but continue. You must keep them in the same order they are in, but you can choose one of the three cards here and cause it to never be. Okay. But I want to know what's going through Charlotte's mind. Okay. Because I can promise you it will be a moral quandary. Okay. I am passing the cards down. You want me to read them out loud? Yes, then and yes, everything? yes, absolutely. This so the, is an audio format. <laughs> so the first one is the void. Your soul is ripped from your body and contained. Wait, 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 hold on. You're reading them in the opposite order. My bad. Should I just continue with that? I already, do you want to cut? No, no, okay. just. All right. The fates. Reality fabric. Reality's fabric unravels and spins anew, allowing you to avoid or erase an event as if it never happened. Don John, you become entombed in an extra dimensional sphere. You remain imprisoned until you are found and released. You can't draw again. And your soul is ripped from your body and contained in the object. You cannot be restored to your body without the object. So the first card is the fates. I'm yep. going to keep that. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the void. Okay. Send the cards back to me, please. Okay, so there's the two. So he did manage to draw the donjon, but then the one he got extra was also a bad one. Yes. But at least the donjon is... You have an incredible sense of dread upon you now. You know what is in store for you and what will happen in the next moments of your life. Your alignment has also changed. Mm -hmm. Do you pick up the next card? Yes. As you do, Titania looks at you, places a hand on your shoulder. You have made the choice I would have made in your shoes. May it weigh heavily upon your soul. And she steps through the portal. She disappears but the aperture still remains in front of you. Okay. You draw your next card. It's the fates. Mm -hmm. You may undo one event as if it never happened. I wish I'd never drawn from this deck at all. <laughs> <laughs> he monkey pod, you bitch. <laughs> That's where we'll end this week's episode. <laughs> Yeah! Because now James is like, how the fuck do I encounter that? <laughs> because I want this shit to happen. We're going to go into the aftercast with this. dear listener? We're going to go into the aftercast with this. right now? You know what would help a crisp, refreshing, <laughs> fat tire from New Belgium Brewing? Oh, Are you man. angry that I just wasted a half an hour <laughs> of your life? Raytheon can solve all your problems. Or, or in the schools. <laughs> And Raytheon has come out with a new line of uh, world protection called the Faytheon Knife Missile. It's like the Raytheon Knife Missile, just a lot more chaotic. It's only for fairy tale oh, characters. Oh, shit. Huh. All right. I know what I'm going to do. That's fine. Join us next week on Room and Bard. Oops. All deck of many fates. Where just Everybody gets a deck of fates now. <laughs> Wonderful. I also do want to... Well, I'll, this will be after cast stuff. Yep. All right. Uh, if you have not yet become a Patreon member, head on over to patreon.com forward slash room and bard. We have free and paid tiers available. You get bonus content, extra cool stuff. <laughs> Access yes. to the smoke cast. <laughs> <laughs> Smokers cut. Um, what else do we got? Smokers I don't think we have cut. anything to announce right now. Um, no. Thanks for all the people that came up to me at 2 dcon and said they love the podcast. That was really cool. Did that actually happen? Yes. Oh, I yeah, had a we, we haven't really talked. What the, why the fuck would you say that on Because Mike? it's never happened to us. Yes, it has. Shh. I'm trying to get the pity. 
Give Don't the- get the pity. <laughs> no. Let's lean into the fact people actually listen to us and like our content somehow. That's pretty much more. I'm, I'm more. Uh, never. What does that even say? Cease, please. <laughs> I also handed him one that said cease and desist. No, please. never. No, All right, but as always, I'm thank more, you so much for listening. Come on over to surprised. Patreon and listen to our morning aftercast where we talk about this episode. Uh, it's the podcast after the podcast about the podcast you just heard. And as always, I'm James, your daddy smack em, bat em. I'm Vito, the concerned citizen. <laughs> uh, Jameis, big, big brained. I'm Trevor. Pedro Pascal is a handsome man. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Room and Bard Tavern. I am James, your Dungeon Mancer, the purveyor of this fine establishment. We're going to take a look over here at our message and quest board, and today we have one message, and it is from Andrew, and it says, When looking for rocks, be sure to taste your rock first and sort them by taste rather than color. All right, everybody, if you want your own message read here on the quest or tavern board, head on over to patreon.com forward slash room and bard and find out how.